the ministry of the supernatural, uh, I've never experienced it like we did today. Um, I was standing in a, I think it started off with the old man Paul was talking about, and um, as the as the rush came, <laughs> I ended up ministering in the gutter <laughs> to everyone. They just lined up in the gutter and um, just continued to minister the healing of the Lord to so many people. So many stunning miracles, so many people touched. The number of women that I prayed for who had, I'm, I, I'm expecting it was some sort of chest infection. They were all complaining they had a heavy chest, finding it hard to breathe with coughing and just ministering the Lord to them and just them instantly saying, oh, the weight's gone, just feeling light in the chest. Um, ministering to ladies with ankles and knees and backs that were in pain and just seeing them begin to activate their faith, testing where it was once sore and then rejoicing that all the pain had left their body. So it was just an awesome day. Prayed for some people who had partial hearing loss and um, to test it I would lean forward and whisper in their ear and they would begin to smile or begin to smile and I knew that the Lord had touched their ears. I prayed for a man who had who was saying his vision was deteriorating, um, that he could read the newspaper but he could only read the, the headline, couldn't read the small text and after prayer um, he was probably one of four, maybe five, well, probably three or four people who had their eyes healed of that type of um, problem where they could read big letters but not the little letters and they could begin to, it was just stunning watching them begin to read the small text and just seeing the smile light on their face. I prayed for a girl who had this chest problem. She got healed and there was a lady standing next to her and I said, all right, now you need to pray for this sister. And so she laid her hands on the sister and I said to her, this is how it works, this is what you do. This is how the Lord wants to use you to heal other people. Command it to go in Jesus' name. And the Spirit moved through her as well. And so we had the local people ministering to the local people and seeing miracles happening in Jesus' name. So that was really good. Um, I was involved in my first um, solo deliverance ministry today, which is pretty exciting. <laughs> there was a lady who came forward whose name was Isa. And a man came to me and she said, you've got to pray for this guy. And by this time, I was wasted. <laughs> she was at the end. I'd sort of pulled up stumps and thought, this is the end. I've had enough. It's time to move on. And not that I was disappointed. I was extremely happy. But it was like, we really need to get moving to get to the next place. So anyway, this man said, you need to pray for this one. She needs prayer. And I said, what was the problem? And he said, she can't hold the baby in. And what the problem was, she kept on having miscarriaging. She kept on um, having premature mature deliveries and um, as I began to minister to her um, the word came to me just that I would take back everything that the enemy has robbed, stolen and just um, he's come to steal, rob and destroy and um, life in her body and as soon as I said that she just started to shake all over and going okay this is a demon that's causing this and so I just commanded the thing in Jesus name you've got to come out I'm re you're not going to steal life out of this mother any longer anyway she was shaking and going and she fell on her knees and I was starting to feel a bit embarrassed for her because this big crowd started to gather and she was right on the edge of this very high sort of footpath. It was almost like a stage. But she had no control over what was going on. And I just kept ministering to her, commanding this thing to come out. And um, she just lifted her hands up like this and then she just fell flat. Bang! <laughs> and um, the thing left her and you could just see freedom just hit her like that. I said to the guys, it was just like being in the New Testament. This must have been what it was like when Jesus was ministering on the streets with the disciples and everyone just came and I had that image of when they came to his house, like all these people just showed up and they just kept coming and coming all morning when we were ministering and, and I guess if the Lord wasn't moving, they wouldn't have kept coming. <laughs> but they were just coming and coming and coming and we just saw some tremendous miracles today. An older guy, he, uh, his son came to interpret for him but he had um, a back pain and leg pain. Um, I think he was trying, he was saying something about it was a fibro thing, so I'm not sure whether he was saying he had fibroids or he had fibromyalgia or what he was saying, but he had pain. Um, his hips and his knees, his legs and everything, so started praying for him. And uh, after a few minutes, just asked him, you know, could he test it? He began to test it and, uh, and he went, he sort of bent over a bit and um, the 
son, who, like this guy must have been, I don't know, 50 or 60. The son was probably 30 or so. And uh, and so he bent over the son and says, well, he, that's more than he's usually done. And uh, so we prayed some more and then said, test it again. And as he was testing, I just kept ministering the healing to him, declaring the healing over his body. And uh, eventually he would bend right over and then he would squat right down and the, the son's eyes are just going, he hasn't done that for ages, you know, he hasn't been able to do that. And so just kept declaring the healing over him and he'd squat down and, and each time he'd squat he'd come up and he'd go down and come up and go down. And each time he'd just get a little bit further and further till he was going all the way down. So he walks down into the gutter Marty was talking about then he says, okay, I need to test it some more and so he gets up out of the gutter and he takes it up, it takes himself up these steps, probably about five steps and like each step is, you know, double our sorts of steps. So it really takes some work from the knees and the back. If there was going to be pain, uh, it was going to show up on these steps and he makes it all the way up without his cane. He had, he'd come in with a cane hobbling on it and so he gets all the way to the top. I said, do you want to go down? And away he goes down the steps all the way to the bottom of these big steps. Uh, you know, going down steps is tough as well in a different way for the knees. But he gets down to the bottom and uh, and the son was holding the man's cane in his hat and, and I said, uh, well he won't be needing this anymore and that son goes, that's right, this one's mine now. <laughs> and he's taken it home as a souvenir that his dad's healed and then mum came in and she got healed of her stuff as well, whatever that was, I can't remember, but they're very, very cool, very cool. Dad.